he, he, he was good, and I, I don't want to praise him too much. And the reason being, that, I'm telling you, that's what that dude's capable of. Uh, he, he had a big game for us on the road, but I'm telling you, that's, that's De'Aaron Fox. And it's great that the league, not just the, not just people in the NBA, but media, fans, uh, it, they're starting to recognize his greatness. And he's just scratching the surface. He's just scratching the surface. This was the f one of the first games where he called me off multiple times, especially late. I made a play call. He, he's got the green light to override me. He did it tonight on multiple occasions. Great players don't get tired. Great players make their teammates good. And that's what he did tonight. Uh, and he, he came and won the game for us. That's what great players do on the road. Took my hat off to him. What got into him that made it happen tonight? I, I, I just, he, he's it, uh, basically all it, it's, it's a, just like for, for the rest of our team, we really haven't been in this position before. And we're all growing and we're all learning together. And uh, he's at the forefront of it. Uh, he and Domas. And uh, it, it, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a journey. Uh, but I'm glad I'm on this ride with him because he's an all-star and he's playing at an all-star level for us. Can you talk a little bit about the slow start for him? One point after the first quarter and then it kind of as the game goes along, it accelerates to a 22-point career high in any quarter. Um, fourth for you guys and, and kind of how he manages to even when there's struggles throughout to be able to create a flow and an explosion in his offense. Well, that's the, that's the best, biggest thing is he can create that explosion at any time. My thing to him is at the beginning of the game, you need to be the head of the snake defensively. And I, I know at any point in time he's going to explode offensively. That's going to come, especially with the shooting that we have on the floor and all that other stuff. Uh, I thought he was good to start the game defensively. He's, he's doing just what I asked him. And then I said, pick your spots offensively because during the game he's going to get to plenty of spots to score or make plays for his teammates. So I thought the, rest, the, the, the recipe that he brought to the game tonight was, was fantastic. I feel like the success that you guys had in the fourth with the back door cut with Domas at that kind of right high elbow. Yep. And you had three, three different guys, De'Aaron, then Keegan with the three-point play finish, and then Herter for one. I felt like that kind of the distraction that created defensively having that, yep. De'Aaron started finding himself with literally no defender on him. For sure. So can you kind of talk about how as the quarter went along, how you kind of manipulated offensively to kind of create these different looks and options? Well, we got a lot of shooters, and we don't want them just standing around the perimeter. We're a huge paint touch team, and that's not just from the dribble drive. We want paint touches from rolls and pick and rolls or DHOs. We want paint touches in backdoor cuts. We want paint, tu paint touches in just regular cuts. Obviously, the driving kick. So there are multiple the ball going into the post. There are multiple ways to get a paint touch, which then in itself flattens the defense. And once the defense gets flattened, uh, people have to react a certain way. And now when that ball gets kicked out, the driving lanes open up because we don't just preach cut back door. If you don't get it, you got to relocate to space. And so with all that movement, it's hard to not almost watch your man, you know, because most teams would just lock in on Foxy and shrink the floor. But if you got constant movement, movement with constant paint touches, now when the ball finds him or when he's bringing it next time, everybody's worried about this back door or this possible flare or Domas flashing and now two guys going back door. And again, it just, it's a recipe, it's, it's a domino effect. It's, it's a recipe for a domino effect where they just start to fall and the game gets easier for our guys as we go along. Coach, with uh, De'Aaron, calling off the plays. Yeah. 
Can you speak to the, the mental part of it too? You know, you can call off plays, you know, you could take your man. 100%. But he was searching for the matchups, it seemed like, down, late down the stretch. Yeah, he, he, for sure. He, he was searching for matchups. He didn't just call me off for himself. You, you know, he, he, he did it a couple of times for his teammates too, which is great. You know, and, and again, uh, it, it, you know, that's a, a part of the game that he's learning to do. And I say he's learning to do it because we've thrown a lot of new stuff at this team this year. And it takes a while for him to get a feel for guys' strengths and to uh, do that during the flow of the game at the right time. And uh, I, I thought his, his ability to quarterback the team tonight, um, plus his ability to put us on his shoulders was was great and, and again I caution myself because that's what he is he's a great player did you think marketing and shop was good and, or did you know it was a I, I I didn't I didn't know and then so when when they said it was no good I, I asked Delia I said did it count did it count I said no I was like yeah. I started celebrating you know so I need to apologize to Will Hardy because hey, I, I I was acting like a little kid I was just I was jumping up and down I was so excited you know did you guys have a trampoline at your house that you used to jump on with your roommates we yeah, yes yes yeah okay fair enough I, uh, I do want to ask you a couple questions about some things that have been problematic over the last few games and just in terms of heading into the homestand, playing Atlanta tomorrow, offensive rebounds for second chance points, turnovers. 100%. The bench tonight usually is something that you yeah. can really rely on, and that's asking a lot of your starters <clears throat> to carry you offensively in that way. For sure. And, and you know what? Uh, giving the bench a little credit, they've been good throughout most of the year. And they're going to have, a, quote, unquote, a down game. <clears throat> uh, I'm OK with the, you know, the lack of scoring from the bench. Where I thought we got hurt, we, we gave up too many offensive rebounds and we turned the ball over during that stretch. <clears throat> so we have to be better in those areas. If we're not going to score or shoot it well, we have to be solid. And and I thought there were too many times where we weren't solid, not just our not just our bench, but as a whole, as a team as a whole. And uh, we have to be better in those areas. I addressed it with the team. Uh, even though we won the game, I said, hey, guys, we gave up almost 60 points off our turnovers and offensive rebounds. They shoot 43% from the floor, 29% from the three, which is hard to do versus this team. I said, imagine if we can cut that in half, which is realistic, <laughs> you know. It, 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 you know, you give up 15 points off your turnovers and maybe 8 to 10 points off your off second-chance points. And... <clears throat> Now it's a ball game in our favor that we feel good about. So it's something that we did address. We addressed it after the last game, too, in Memphis. But uh, we just have to continue trying to get better in that area. All right. Thanks, yep. Thanks, Thank you.